Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. You don't gain anything. You lose your self-image, your attachments, your desires, and you gain something that is ineffable, you know, liberation, peace. But those are not things you really gain. Those are things that already are there that you can participate with. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. In this episode, you'll hear how one member of the call applies the self-reflective tools we discussed last week in their own life and relationship, which you can use to model your own self-inquiry. Then to close out this series, you'll learn how to apply these same ideas and tools as a manager so you can mentor others to also mature beyond ego. As you listen, please remember the questions we discussed last week from Byron Katie's work. What's the thought you're holding on to? How do you react when you believe that thought? Who would you be without that thought? There's more to it than that, but that will get you pretty far. Sit with those questions. Try to sense the version of you that may arise, the you you are without the ego. I offer a weekly member webcast, online courses, and mentorship at clearandopen.com because it's my truth that with the right tools, anyone can eliminate the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business. And I share parts of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open the podcast app, view the full description of this episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. Thanks very much for listening. Let's start the show. How does this apply to you? I'm not really in a whole lot of pain right now. I know I have been in the past three and a half, four years, Mm -hmm. but I'm trying to, you know, in all the things I do and, and 12 step and, and therapy and on and on, I try to, how am I going to apply this in my daily life? Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if I'm, I'm going to take a stab at it. I don't even know if I'm in the ballpark. Okay. Okay. Good. So I just noticed a change within me lately with some things and things that I thought I dealt with that I was golden three months ago have started to show up in this, in this relationship I'm in. Ah, that's always interesting. Which is, which is really good. Mm -hmm. I think because there's things that I really thought were squashed and and they're not. Okay. Yeah. Relationships will usually show you what you (laughs) thought were handled the horn. It's sort of, they, it, it's, it's so powerful. It will squeeze every last drop out of an issue. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but I have noticed a shift where some of, some of my thoughts, um, where before I would, I would run with them and immediately cause something that may have may or may not be even a problem, a real problem. So I've learned to, to not believe my thoughts, not react, not, not say things around those thoughts until I gather more information. And usually the information that I gather totally discounts my thoughts. That's great. Congratulations. And it's been really awesome. Mm. Um, as far as that goes, Mm -hmm. then there was another, you know, I'll give you a specific situation. Um, she came over to my house on Saturday and she brought this, her little dog, nine pound dog. And I live in an area, it was cold. It was windy. It was, the sun was going down. She loves, absolutely loves this animal. And, um, the dog got out of my backyard. Uh Oh, yeah. And I mean, we have coyotes around. Yeah. I mean, this is not a place where this dog, a little dog like that is going to survive the night, especially the weather. Right. Oh, 
And I'm thinking we, we have to go now before the sun goes down. Let's, there's a lot of spaces in between houses and let's get moving. And, and we did. And I mean, we, we, we ended up finding the dog, but I knew how attached she was to this dog. And I'm, I'll get to my point, mm-hmm. but, but w- when I was driving, you know, I said, we got to split up. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> you go that way, Right. Um, until the sun goes down and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump in together. But as I was driving down the road, I thought, Oh, so this is how it ends. <laughs> you know, your relationship. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so there's my thought, right. Uh-huh. And I mean, I wasn't in my mind, I really wasn't far from the truth. I didn't think, you know, but, but something else took over that said, okay, well, then it's okay. Mm. Then it, it has, this is the way it's going to, this, if that's the way it's going to be, then it's great. I, I guess I got everything out of this relationship that I needed to. Mm. And I was perfectly okay with it. It didn't mean that I didn't care about her or us or the relationship. It just meant I didn't have to go down a wormhole. Yeah. Um, There's so many fears. You could have been consumed with fear and you would have, you know, made the search harder and you would have tortured yourself. All sorts of stuff could have come from that thought, right? Yes. And there was some of it that was true because I told her afterwards, I told her exactly what I just told you. Cool. She's like, Oh my gosh. I mean, no, not we, we, it wouldn't end the relationship. Um, but she said, well, I wouldn't have been able to come to your house for a very long time. (laughs) (laughs) But, but because I know she gets up in her head, uh, a little bit as well, but it's just, I just noticed this shift lately. Um, a, 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 a little detached, but still with care. What a great example that in that moment, the, the ego mind said, well, I guess this is how it ends. And you matured beyond it. You, you were there. And that's the tricky thing because the thoughts don't go away. The ego doesn't go away. It's just you realize that you're not it. And mm-hmm. so there was a bigger you there that was like, hmm, there's that thought. Interesting. Well, if it does go that way, then it goes that way. Whereas if you hadn't been there, that thought would have probably snowballed. Yes, absolutely. It made your life miserable. Yes. I would have been upset by the time I went back and said something ridiculous. Yeah. yeah I've done it. I've, I've done it. What, what was that, Tiffany? That's, and that's what would have ended it. And that's what, it would, exactly. yeah, that's what I was going to say. It could have caused the end of it to happen just so that it didn't happen to you, in quotes, you know? that caused it to end. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing I was, I was kind of pointing to is it, that co- has come up is me wanting to know, me wanting to know outcomes, me wanting to know how it does this end. Does it go on forever? Yeah. What is the time frame? I need to know, you yeah. know, but, but that's, that's the ego, right? Yeah. And, and again, look at how, like I was saying before, how useful all of that is, right? It's like when paying your taxes or getting a job or like maintaining your car, mm-hmm. that all of that kind of thinking is completely needed and necessary. Mm-hmm. I mean, because she's really, really smart. She's really intelligent, but she's a little, a little behind me on certain things as far as maybe recovery and then working with you guys and, and doing all of these things. So I tend to, without even knowing it, help her or I'm steering her without not even, I'm not even trying to be honest with you, but she, she, their light bulbs go off in her head. And, and I feel like, wow, well, I'm really useful, right? I'm really useful to her. And so when she's all healed up, you know, what, what's my point? What's my, what's my, Oh, well, how, what, what, what good are you then? Right. What good am I then? <laughs> you know, so I've stayed away from the whole healer kind of, Dude, I don't. I don't want to be that guy. Good, but, but there's a lot of thoughts that that come through mm-hmm. this brain, and um, it's just been really refreshing not to not yeah. to react. It and mm-hmm. you know, is that true? And and it's and it and it is incredible how it is. I've never been in a relationship like this ever. 
And it's just so amazing in so many ways, but I'm still not attached to it. It's just the oddest thing. Congratulations. It sounds like you, you, you have a post-ego relationship happening. Hmm. When you say, I've never had one like this before, and from what you're describing, because you know, the, the, the ego mind gets quite attached to love interests, right? That's why they're so crazy and hectic, and, you know, especially in the beginning. Because there's this, the ego mind wants to grab and keep the love and make control it, make sure you don't lose it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so that that's not happening is a good indication that you've completed something and you've d- drawn a partner that is for the more mature version of you. Mm-hmm. That's great feedback. Okay. I just, I feel... And there's other other instances, you know, in work and in, in business, on the road, whatever. But it's just, I just feel a shift. It's, it's, it is. But you don't get a certificate with this. No. <laughs> in fact, you don't get anything. You, right. Usually, you lose things. <laughs> it's like when the Buddha, uh, when when someone asked the Buddha, you know, what he gained in enlightenment, the answer was absolutely nothing. Because you don't gain anything, you lose your self-image, your attachments, your desires, and you gain something that is ineffable, you know, liberation, peace, but those are not things you really gain. Those are things that already are there that you can participate with. Okay. So that clears it up because I do feel more peaceful. I do Mm -hmm. feel more whole. Mm -hmm. I do feel, you know, just a contentment and, um, yeah, there's a relaxation to it also, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, so I would argue, you know, I would argue with you. Yes. That I, but I got all these things. Right. But mm-hmm. really they were there the whole time. Yeah. And it's not like you didn't gain those things through seeking, like I'm going to be more peaceful. I'm going to be more liberated. And that's the, the paradox of when people do meditations that are designed to produce specific states in content, okay, I'm glad for them. It's working for them and all that. But in context, it's no different than a plan to acquire a new object. Mm-hmm. You know, because the piece is already there. So whatever piece you're trying to construct is not going to be the real thing. It's going to be an egoic projection. Mm-hmm. And the tricky thing is that that actually can work. It's limited. If, but it can work the same way, the same thing that happens in the mainstream versions of the greatest teachers of our world into religion. You know, there are true teachings at the kernel of it, but they get distorted into egoic machinations that only approximate what, what actually is possible. I can't think of a greater validation from life than meeting a romantic partner who doesn't turn you into your own egoic mess because I think <laughs> what it seems to me what life does is it while you're in the egoic phase it keeps giving you because like i said before there's nothing more powerful to wring out every last drop of every issue than a romantic partner so when you need your issues wrung out like a sponge life says okay well here you go you can date your mother slash father you know, 10 times in a row until we get all this done. And then when you finally draw someone who doesn't elicit your ego to operate it, well, then you know you've wrung all the other stuff out. It's a powerful indication. It's interesting. And I, I, I haven't formed this thought yet, but I just had this flash of like the before and after. Cause I don't, I don't think that I share with you, Kurt. Um, I know Joseph knows this, but Phil and I got back together about a year ago and it's like being with a whole different person, but, it's, but I'm a whole different person. I mean, we're both, it's, it's completely different. And it's only taken, it's taken about a year of kind of testing all this, but not really testing it, but like experiencing trust and safety in a way that I've never allowed myself to. And I realized how much I was in my own way before. It was, it's been really, really helpful to, yeah. you know, and it's been talk about surrender. I mean, I've had surrender in all aspects of my life. It's that for sure. But also that surrender is allowing me to surrender in other areas because yeah. of feeling safe. Yeah. That's another way it can happen. 
a, a shift in an existing relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Often more difficult. Definitely. Oh my but, gosh. Because I was like, oh, here's all the triggers. Yeah, that's like, uh, you know, remodeling the plane while it's in the air kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, those... Those grooves, boy, those those ruts run deep in, in a long term relationship and habits and mm-hmm. reactions and all that stuff. I know. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I, I can really feel what you're what you're saying there, Kurt. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Regardless of the relationship, I'm happy that you're in a relationship. But I'm happy that you have that peace in your relationship. Yeah. So, well, you guys both in, in many domains are doing quite well. So that leads to an, uh, another sort of vector. And that is when you're managing people, look at your mentoring of them through this lens. Where are they not competently doing their job? And how is that a call for them to grow up? Right? Where is their egoic consciousness holding them back from competence? You know, taking customer complaints too personally, for example, that's what an ego does, right? Making it more about their individual needs than doing what's right. That's what an ego does. You know, one of the fascinating things about a business is you usually are interacting with people that normally you wouldn't hang out with because they have different values, different points of view, right? So an employee who doesn't get along with, you know, someone really different than them in a competence context like work. That's an egoic phase of consciousness thing, right? Yeah, it, well, you know, because you both know I'm in recovery, but the rooms of recovery is, are exactly like that. Yeah. You could be sitting next to a gangbanger on this side and a judge on this side. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it, yeah, it's just, you really don't have anything in common a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, the specific addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. Know, yeah. And, you know, and what is that in a business, right? What, what is it? That's the, one of the cool things about a business. Of course, in content, you're all working toward the same goal, whether it's, you know, producing mm-hmm. food or cleaning clothes or whatever it is. But what else joins people? That, that's where the values of the business come in. And can employees see the embodiment of the company's values as a tool for their own maturing beyond ego? If that's the phase that they're even in, you know, Likely they've got some, depending on the person, they may have some egoic stuff that still has to get sorted out, like keeping their word and following through and these kinds of, you know, ego maturation issues. For most people, it's a blend. Adulthood is a blend, figuring, growing up the rest, growing the ego the rest of the way up and then letting it go. It's, you know, it's not like it's uh, one versus the other. Both can be happening. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that clear and open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcasts app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com slash review, and it will bring you to the right place. If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.